Hey VC, what's up? It's me, yours truly. I am back to post a quick video here. Uh, this is gonna be a response to a thread I've seen going around. Uh, haven't had a chance to do too many videos over the past week or two. And you would think with the COVID thing, it'd be kind of just the opposite, but uh, just for whatever reason, just hadn't had a chance to really get in front of the camera. But I did see a couple people make some responses to this earlier and I was watching their videos. I thought it was really cool. So I thought I would kind of jump on board. And I apologize, I didn't even think to go back in and see who originally started the thread to make sure to give them, you know, kind of props and credit for that. But a uh, fun thread, want to jump on board and here are my picks. And simply put, it was, you know, show, show uh, was it hats off or something like that? But it was just show covers of people wearing hats, basically is what it boiled down to. So um, I went in and picked out a few. And as you can see, I added a little bit to the title of my video with, with the, the to you that's in there. And I added that in just a really quick, funny story. When my older brother was younger, he, um, he, my parents gave him a birthday party, right? And so, you know, back in the day, it was really popular with the paper hats, with the, you know, the string that went over there. So he got one of those. And, you know, we didn't grow up with a lot of money and stuff like that. So every little thing that we got like that was a big deal. And so... Uh, you know, he got his hat, had his party, and he, you know, he kept the hat afterwards. And one day he couldn't find it, and so he was going around looking for it. And and he, you know, he was small, so he kept asking my mom, "Where's my to you? I can't my to you. Where's my to you?" And my mom's like, "What in the world is he looking for? What what's a to you?" <laughs> and come to find out later. You know, since those hats were associated with birthdays, it was because of the happy birthday to you. <laughs> so he just started calling the hat a to you. So in my family, that's what we call hats are to yous. And uh, it's, <laughs> it's kind of the code that we use in public so we can actually maybe talk about somebody. Or, you know, if someone's wearing a, a hat that, like, my mom likes to wear hats. You know, she has, like, a lot of fancy and she might see someone at, in church or something like that that has a, a really nice hat on, and she'll be like, man, look at that to you. <laughs> you know? And of course, nobody around you has any idea what you're talking about. Or you'll be walking down the mall and see somebody wearing some horrible hat or something like that, and you're like, man, to you. <laughs> and again, you can say it right out loud because nobody has any idea except for the family member you're talking to. So uh, so yeah, here, here's my, uh, here's, here's the thing thread I, when I picked out some of my favorite to use and, uh, and I tried to pick ones that with the videos I watched you know there was a number of them that that guys chose that I would have picked so I tried not to duplicate as much so hopefully I'll have some fresh ones in here but the very first one that came to mind was this one right here like as soon as I thought about doing this this was the first album that popped in my mind even before like run DMC um, Cab Calloway you know, the Heidi Ho man. Love Cab. I mean, just again, just talk about a guy that just goes back to the days of just being a pure entertainer. I mean, just awesome across the board. So I have so much respect for what he did, especially during the time period that he was doing it as well, because it wasn't exactly easy. Um, but yeah, so, you know, got to give props to Cab on that. And of course, he's wearing that that big round hat, which is just so associated with the zoot suit, which is what, which is what Cab, you know, one of the things he really made popular was, was those bad zoot suits, man. <laughs> Matter of fact, I remember, you know, being introduced to him kind of at an early age and, um, you know, even kind of sharing it with my brothers and stuff like that. And I remember he had such an influence on that, that they actually ended up wearing zoot suits to their prom instead of regular tuxedos. You know, so, yeah, Cab is definitely right at the top of that list for some bad to use right there. The next one, I'm count, kind of counting as one picks the same person, but I wanted to show two covers. Um, I'll show you here in a reason. I'll show you here in a second. But um, Cool Modi, definitely well known for two things, which are his, uh, his glasses. You know, those were always the shades that he wore. And he kind of changed up his hats every now and then. He mainly wore leather hats, but also kind of that flat cane gold type of hat was something that he wore all the time. And so that's uh, definitely one I have to, to give props to. Uh, you know, one of the early pioneers of hip hop, one of my favorites too. 
you know, uh, How Do You Like Me Now, Wild Wild West, uh, Go See the Doctor, um, just all, all kinds of stuff. But, but one of my favorite songs off here, just a little side notes, I'm just kind of chatting here. Uh, back when I was in junior high and kind of going to early high school, I was really into the whole BMX and freestyling thing. And uh, actually a friend of mine, uh, he and I both rode for a, as a sponsorship, a team sponsorships. We would go and do different contests and stuff like that. And so I'll never forget the very first contest I ever did, a flatland contest I did, which I got second place, I think. Yeah, I think I got second place in that. And the song that I rode to was The Best by Cool Modi. <laughs> So every time I hear that song, it just takes me back to that point of just all those nerves and everything of, you know. So wanted to pull that out, but I also wanted to kind of show this one. Still the same cool modi. Again, kind of the, you know, the flat Kango type of hat. But I wanted to pull this album cover out because, and this is, of course, How Do You Like Me Now? Because if you notice down here, there's also a red Kango which is kind of more of the rounded top and the round bill as opposed to the flat. So that actually shows two different hats on there. And just in case there's, you know, for anybody who's not into old school hip hop and, and all of that type of stuff, you know, there were always beefs and everything, you know, long before the whole East Coast, West Coast and Tupac thing and Biggie and all of that crap. But um, of course, it just wasn't quite as crazy as that. But, and I don't know the exact story about what led up to it, but Cool Mo D and LL Cool J had this weird thing going on between them. So, of course, anyone who knows about early LL Cool J, like his complete and total M.O., I don't know if there was ever a picture taken of him without, in those early years, without his red Kango on. Like, that was just his thing. His, his Kango always matched his shirt. But nine times out of ten, he was wearing a red one. So this was kind of cool. Modi's little diss to him was to, on the front of his album cover, show his white Jeep running over LL's Kango on the, on the crown. So more cool stuff there. Here we have Gay for Johnny Depp. Another kind of just weird off the wall type of record. Kind of, you know, punkish. But, uh, yeah, as you can see there, kind of the, the leather Titanic, I guess, sailor's hat. I don't know exactly what you call that, but I thought that was a cool one. Then you got my boys Houdini right here. And, of course, I'm going with my man Ecstasy right there. You know, one of my absolute favorite hip-hop groups of all time. Um, of course, on this album, you have like one of their most killer tracks, which is Funky Beat. But uh, of course their album right before this Escape was the one that was just incredible, but still fantastic album. But uh, yeah, you can see Ecstasy has his leather, black leather hat on there. You see another good shot of him right there on the back. But it was kind of cool too, because on his first, their first two albums, I guess, uh, he, he never wore that hat. It was, you know, it was just him doing his thing. But I think it was from this album on where that hat kind of became his his thing. And all the videos they did and everything else, he always had that baby on right there. And usually it had like a, a strap that kind of, you know, hung down below his chin or whatever. But got to give it to my boy Ecstasy, man. Houdini, just one of the baddest hip-hop groups of all time. Next... We got a little Danny Wilson. This is from 1987. And you remember the song Mary's Prayer, which was, I don't know if it was, was it a big hit? It was an absolutely fantastic song. But as you can see, see there, you know, they got a couple of nice 2 U on. And here's one I thought, man, eh, nobody's probably not going to end up showing this one. So let me just go ahead and whip it out there. Wilson Phillips, as you can see, Miss Wilson there has her nice little hat on. Although it looks like, kind of looks like the hat that um, the guy from Poltergeist Two was wearing, but but uh, yeah, so that's kind of a cool one there. Yeah, little Wilson Phillips, I do like Wilson Phillips. I mean, I don't listen to him as much now, but um, yeah, I always kind of liked him. I mean, they're just you know very 
poppy and blah 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 but still they had some songs that i thought were pretty cool um give it up i think is probably still my favorite song by them not on this album but you know that's how i roll if it rings nice in my ear you guys know who i am i don't care cool or not if i like i like and we'll go from wilson phillips to the one and only which is larry graham he's wearing the heck out of that to you boy but yeah, you know, Larry Graham, Larry Graham Central Station, you know, Sly and the Family Stone. I mean, just from just one of the, the nasty plucking his bass players, just, mm. <laughs> you know. But uh, yeah, this is one of his solo albums from the early, earlier mid 80s. But yeah, as you can see there, he's definitely sporting the, sporting the two of you there. Decent album. I mean, I can't say I like every single song on there, but one of one of my favorite solo songs by him of all time, which is One in a Million. Fantastic song. Great, great piece. I remember my older brother sang it at my sister's wedding, um, which is actually, I think it's where I kind of first really got on board with it because I didn't really know about Larry Graham's solo stuff up to that point in time. So very cool stuff. Then you have the Tony Rich Project, and this is from 1995, I think. And uh, this is a song, uh, Nobody Knows. As you can see there, he has a really cool, really cool little hat on. I haven't spun this in a while. I think I'm going to give this a spin as soon as I finish with the video here. But I don't, I like, I love the song actually, but sometimes it's just, it's hard to listen to because it's so freaking sad. <laughs> I mean, it's like, it's hard to listen to it without really, like, going where he's going. And so sometimes it's not as enjoyable a thing, but still, it's a fantastic song. If you're not familiar with it, make sure you check it out. But just talk about total heartbreak. And then the last two, got a little Neo here. Trying to make himself look all sexy-like. <laughs> Trying a little too hard, in my opinion. But uh, I don't know what kind of hat that is, but, you know, he's trying to do the cool thing there. Uh, another kind of cool album, you know, some some definitely some kind of great 90s, 2000, late 90s, early 2000s R&B type of hits. Um, what was the one really, really good song on here? Uh, da, 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 da. Jeez, what was it? I can't remember now. Hmm. Had to go back and give that a spin, but yeah, so a little Neo there. And last but not least, little Kevin Little here. I don't know if you remember him or not. Um, you know, he had one little kind of, I don't know if it's dance, it was like dance slash kind of Jamaican reggae-ish type of feel to it. Uh, the song Turn Me On, which I think it, you know, kind of made its way on the charts for a little while, but I don't think he ever had anything after that. I could be mistaken, but I don't think he ever had anything or any type of success after that. And quite frankly, I understand why, because there's only about really two songs or so on this album that that are really, in my opinion, kind of worth listening to, and the rest is very kind of, uh, but Turn Me On is definitely a fantastic track. But as you can see there, he is sporting a, a very nice to you. <laughs> but that one cost a pretty penny or so it just just looks nice but uh so there you go guys there's my just kind of random picks of course you have you know other honorable mention things that you could pick out you know i, I skipped over you know run dmc and uh you know a number of other things too but um, especially a number of country things you know tim mcgraw and a few others i kind of skipped over but anyway um yeah, so as always, let me know what you think. Uh, great thread, fun thread, and we will talk to you soon, VC. All right, stay safe, guys.